see it yet. Uh, share desktop. Uh, Tanya, should I, I assume I should be seeing it. It is not. Can anyone see my desktop? I'm not seeing it yet. Okay, thank you. Um, Are you clicking that? It looks like it looks like a little box with an arrow, and it'll say share. Do you see that? Yeah, I did, and it's um, seems to not be sh share desktop. Clicking it. Up, oh, I think progress. Let's see here. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Yay. Yep, okay. Good. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, All righty here. Uh, so let's get started. <laughs> All right, so um, calling this your uh, Photoshop creative learning journey. Um, I added, um, well, let me, I get ahead of myself. So for those of you who don't know me, I know I've met several of you at, at our other um, meetings and stuff uh, with CTE. My name's Michelle Rausch and uh, my background, uh, I was a, a broadcast journalist. Um, that's what actually brought me to Kentucky was uh, a job at the local ABC affiliate in Lexington. And I did that for nearly 20 years. And um, I just loved that um, I've been able to take my skill set and really that's still my passion storytelling um, and put it into a, a second career. And in many ways, uh, it's even better because the the kids today, everyone today has so many more ways uh, to tell stories than when I got started. So it's been a wonderful experience. I will be starting my 10th year um, here shortly, which I can't believe the time has just flown by. And uh, I still feel like a new teacher uh, because I'm just constantly trying to learn new things. And obviously we all know technology changes all the time. So um, I, when I sit and think I'm starting 10 years, I just don't believe it. <laughs> so um, before we get started, um, I mentioned the Adobe uh, Education Exchange. I, the, the lesson that I'm going to show you how I've incorporated this is um, I can't take credit for. I got the idea from the Adobe Education Exchange. And if you have not um, used that before, I cannot speak highly enough of it. As I said, Pablo uh, first uh, tipped me off to it, and it is just a wealth of resources from self-paced classes to uh, you can look for lesson plans and uh, ideas. Sometimes I just scroll through it and uh, just look at what titles are and get the ideas that way. So um, it is a wonderful, wonderful uh, tool. And they just kind of launched a new section of it um, the creative educators, I believe they just did that. Um, and you can earn educator badges. So, um, please go check that out because it, and it's free to sign up and it's amazing. Uh, Photoshop, since we all, that's one of our, um, certifications the kids have taken, uh, that's, uh, can take. That's another reason I kind of added this assignment in. Also, I added it because I thought, you know what, let's start with a, a photo and talk about our, our, you know, framing and wide, medium, all of the shots we need to incorporate into video. I thought, what better way I need to add just photography at the beginning of the year, just to start uh, with still images before we move into that and the, the power of telling a story with an image. And then Adobe Spark, I am a huge fan. I probably use this every week from um, making, and if any of you all in your districts are going online to start the year off. And um, I started using a Canvas uh, classroom for my regular instruction uh, two years ago. And I use Adobe Spark 
all the time just to spruce up my pages when I have assignments. I, I make the assignment that way. Uh, but the, through the Adobe Education Exchange, I love what they call learning journals. So Adobe Spark is amazing. So um, again, just a quick peek at uh, the Education Exchange. If you have not seen that before, uh, this just gives you an idea of the classes that they have. They also have um, uh, the ACA test prep uh, study guides in here. So uh, that's just a quick peek uh, at that. So, um, and again, live classes, teacher learning, lessons by topic. So my inspiration for these projects was this class that I took last summer. And uh, it was a basics of photojournalism class. And I loved this so much. And that's another reason I love the exchange is I'll take a class from like the way they laid it out. I like that. I'm going to use that for teaching my students. So this was the class. Uh, the first um, assignment was using Photoshop, make a photo story based on the theme environment. Uh, take a series of photogra color photographs and select five that tell your story. So with Spark, uh, you can do, uh, as I said, the pages. Think of that as like a web page. Uh, post is like a graphic and then video, uh, which uh, later today um, in Shane's session when we all are really sharing ideas. Uh, we can talk more about this. I might be using this since a lot of my kids and uh, will not be having access to Adobe uh, at home. So Spark Learning Journals. Again, I use the, the Spark page platform, which is like the website. Um, they are wonderful because because it accomplishes many things. The students while well, instead of just giving them an assignment, they go take their photos, they turn the photos in, they are having to explore their own journey of learning in a learning journal and documenting it. So they start out with, and I'll show you an example here in a moment, communicating what, what I've asked them to do and putting that into words, documenting the process. Uh, we all know how important that is to uh, really think about the process of what we are doing. Take ownership and problem solve. Um, one of the other um, uh, classes I took with the exchange, I, I had some technology problems. I documented that in my learning journal, and then it forced me to really document all the ways I troubleshot the issue. And then I found my own resolution with the help of other people. So I think this really helps uh, asking them to include the problem solving is what problems did you run into? Uh, because we all know that's going to happen. It allows them to showcase their work. Ultimately, um, at the end of this, they're kind of building a portfolio and then their post reflection. So I like that these can even be turned into a portfolio because I think that if you showed it as a portfolio, even though you have maybe put your problems in there, it's going to show someone your creative process and how do you respond to problems. So just another reason why I love these. So the environment uh, one. Here is uh, the uh, learning journal that I did. And another reason I like these in time permitting, I know um, I had the the luxury, I did this in the summer, so boom, I automatically had um, a project to model. But uh, one, another project I did this uh, past semester, I did the project with them and I, A, enjoy it. It's helping my skills with uh, learning the Adobe and uh, becoming better at it. And again, I think it really models for them what you wanna do and shows them that you're willing to do exactly what you have asked of them to do. So. I'm going to show you mine, and again, I provide this to the students as well uh, to kind of model what I want to see and to, to show them what it's going to look like. So, and this again is the Spark Journal. So a title page, and I put this in all the criteria. I want a title page with your name. Um, I kind of went, because I had so much fun doing this, I kind of did a little bit extra. <laughs> Um, knowing too in advance that I was going to be sharing this with my students. So I just did set it up with my background and um, talked about 
what I think of photography and how I did it in college. And then I loved this because I think it also modeled to students how, I mean, because I'm a student. What I'm showing them here was when I was in college and a student, so not far from their age, and how we turned a terrible, terrible thing that happened on our campus um, where these two young men were playing a dangerous game of uh, elevator surfing, which I had never heard of, where they're they pried open the shaft and were hanging on the bottom. And then someone was in the elevator pushing the buttons and one of the, they both fell and one of them um, sadly passed away. So we did, um, I mean, it just rocked our campus. So we did our um, instructor said, let's we're turning this into an assignment, react to it with photography. And um, so, and then we actually, she actually, it turned out so great. She uh, curated a little, uh, uh, set or display for us in one of the galleries at school and just the images were just it was so wonderful so um, I, I use that to show students how let's be you know if you're suffering from grief if you're happy whatever photography can be an outlet um, so I, I go through this so as I said I kind of um, went beyond just showed them the how the the response was amazing and all from us just doing one of our assignments for class so um here is uh, the assignment so this is getting more into the meat and potatoes of what i would ask of the students in their learning journal uh, i you know named what the the assignment is assignment one because we're going to build on this journal with the other uh, assignments the environment I, I talked about where I went. Again, I kind of went the extra mile and I put uh, links in here to show the uh, history of what, where I was taking the photos. Here was one of my troubleshooting. So, uh, you know, we all want to set out. We have our mind what we're going to do. Let's get it done and go home. Uh, I think a lot of times I find the students, you know, they, oh, I'm going to go shoot my video. Um, they'll go out and think they're going to get it all done in 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, the creative process takes longer. Uh, I went out there, it started pouring rain. So I had to go home. I didn't get enough of what I need. I went back, but the time I went back, the sun was setting. The, so I thought, oh my gosh, I love the lighting out here better. So I showed how, yeah, I was not thrilled. I had to leave and come back, but oh my goodness, it turned out better because I loved the lighting at that time of day. So then part of the assignment was to learn how, so this is a beginning lesson in Photoshop. So uh, part of the lesson was creating contact sheets. So, um, and at two, I love showing the kids that I took 122 photos. Uh, if your kids are like my kids, so, you know, if I, they have to show five photos, they might take seven. <laughs> and so, uh, and same with video clips, you know, minute 30 story, and they'll come back with 15 clips, five seconds each, you know, I'm like, well, you know, the more you get, I, I, I illustrate to them, you know, look, here's, you know, one window, but I took it, you know, tried to take it from four, four versions of the same thing. So, um, again, modeling. And then after that, I say, okay, then I pick my five out of all those to tell my story. So these were the five that I chose. So, um, and again, there's just some extra that. So the assignment two, again, I was having so much fun. I was ambitious. Um, I did a second version. Um, again, I documented, I was frustrated cause I still didn't, you know, get it all. And I wanted to learn more and apply it. So I did it a second time and with something else. And then here are my, uh, final selections. So, and then again, I, me just adding more about that. So that was the first assignment. Second assignment, uh, going to black and white. So learning that skill in Photoshop. This one, the uh, prompt was tell a story of a person or a group uh, using black and white. So uh, at the time this assignment came was when the Pride Festival was downtown last summer. So I thought, perfect. Um, and the, the, this assignment was also called photojournalism. So um, I thought, oh, that's perfect. So I went down there. I set it up with uh, some of the photos I took initially and um, 
told what my vision was, um, that what I was looking to do. So express that. And again, one of my troubleshooting or frustrations was, gosh, this I've chosen this event that's for black and white. And, you know, this festival, you think color and happiness. And so that was kind of my frustration going in was, okay, how is this going to turn out? So, and then the results, these were the ones that I chose for um, my final that I turned into black and white. Uh, another thing that I liked is when I showed this as an example, my students asked me like, oh, that guy, did you go up to him and ask him to pose? And I said, no. I said, I was, this guy didn't even know I was taking a photo. I was so far away, but the lens I had a, enabled me to get that. This man was walking up to his friends and like, hey, and I, I snapped that picture because I could tell just by watching him in the crowd, he was a real outgoing uh, kind of guy. And I just was like, click, 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 you know, tripping the shutter. And so the kids were like, oh, because they thought that he was looking at me, but he was actually his friends are on either side of him. So, um, so I, I again, it reflected on my experience that I was surprised that I was able to get that many that I thought looked nice uh, in black and white. And again, I was wanting to learn more, play more. And so I did more than the assignment um, required. So that is an example of the first uh, assignment I did with that. Um, so again, summarizing black and white. Um, so now I want to dive into some uh, project ideas that after doing that, that using that as your foundation, that you can give the assignment and then have them document their learning experience and um, their final product in that Spark Journal. Uh, I started thinking of, um, you know, okay, what are some other ideas that I can build? Uh, and, you know, I might not get to all these in one year, but, you know, that way you can mix it up. Um, or maybe another idea is give students an option, you know, maybe, oh, of the three, pick one of the three. So, of course, uh, portraits. Uh, this is uh, something that I really want to do. We can't obviously do it right now with distance learning, but, um, and this is a resource I just discovered uh, this summer as with everything going on, I was kind of digging around and um, Teaching Tolerance website has amazing resources. And um, one of them was um, to pair students, they interview one another. So obviously they're gonna learn those interviewing skills listening skills and then after they have done that interview taking a photo that illustrates what they think the essence of that person is so i really loved uh that idea so um obviously going to be hard to do right now until we get back in person but uh, i like it street photography um, just, you know, kind of that gritty uh, look for, you know, stuff uh, around your town, just um, calling that street photography. Um, off the beaten path, I called this one, um, it, you know, go where maybe I, I did a um, through the University of Kentucky um, continuing education, just anyone can take courses. I did a um, two day uh, class uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, with one of their instructors where we met at like 7 a.m. on a Saturday and it was called uh, Alleys of Lexington, I think. And we just walked around these little um, tiny alleys that had, you know, and a lot of them were old homes and like cool fences and different neat things and just places you wouldn't be normally walking if you're downtown. Um, and I really enjoyed that because you just can, can see some really unique um, things that way. So still life, um, obviously anything, nature, objects, home, anything but people, um, a day in the life. So, um, you know, anywhere we go now, I, I just marvel what's, what's around this. I actually got this idea. Um, and you know, if I told the students, Hey, we're going to be scrapbookers, they'd probably be like, what Miss Roush? Um, but I actually got this idea from one of my little scrapbooking uh, websites that I go to. And um, so 
even though where the kids aren't going to make a scrapbook, they can make a digital album. Um, and it was, it, this is called a day in the life and just document your everyday life because, you know, years from now when th- these kids have families or even when they want to look back on their own life, um, you know, what is daily life? It's the mundane. And so um, that's what she's done, you know, taking a picture of that morning cup of coffee, you know, cause that's your routine or just the things that make up our daily lives. So um, I actually, I'm do I did, well, I haven't done it yet, but um, I took the photos for one of the, a day in a life that I'm going to make this little mini album. And it was the day that I went around and delivered my uh, seniors, their senior yard signs and any certificates they earned. And I documented that because I thought, you know, we're all sitting at home. That's something I do want to document the, the one day I get out. So, um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to make that one of the photography lessons, a day in the life, document your day. Um, this was again, another Adobe education exchange, uh, Photoshop class that I took and it was, um, they called the assignment. I was there when, and it was learning obviously how to, um, you know, crop yourself, do cropping and adding it. So, um, I, I'm from Dallas. So I thought, you know what, big event in Dallas, uh, years ago. So I, I found a picture of the grassy knoll. And then I found a picture of myself when uh, I worked in television. And that's what I did for mine. So I think the kids can have I had fun doing this. And so I think the kids could have really fun finding an old historic photo. And then for their lesson in Photoshop on the cropping and um, adding your images. Uh, this is one, uh, another one that uh, I think I saw a teacher talk about maybe on the, uh, if anyone's a member of JEA, um, I think that's where I got this uh, inspiration from. But um, if anyone's familiar with Barbara Kruger, um, any fellow, I was an art history minor, but um, if any of y'all are familiar with her, uh, social statements. So um, I'd like to incorporate this where the students take their own original photo and then work with Photoshop, with adding text and graphics and make a social statement um, photo. So that was another that I'm gonna call social statement photography. So here's some more um, ideas. So uh, environment we've touched on black and white. I was there when portraits, my America. Um, that's another one that I think I'm gonna incorporate uh, this year is photos of what to you symbolize America? Because again, with everything going on, you know, it's really made me really take hard look at things. And, uh, you know, sadly, we're all realizing that maybe we've kind of lived in this bubble. Um, and, you know, like my American experience is completely different than um, a friend of color or, um, you know, so document symbols that mean America. Um, we had a wonderful young man um, that attended our school that was from Africa. And he literally, when he tells his story, you're like, this is a movie, but no, it was his life. And long story short, they, that his family fled when he was a child because literally warlords came to their family's property, killed his grandparents. They fled and ultimately reunited. They made it to America. And this young man, uh, gosh, he, he, the things he cherishes about being here, uh, that we all take for granted. And so I just like the photos he would take, uh, would be really interesting. So my America is what I'm calling that, uh, the street photography, uh, photography as a witness. I'm going to get to that here in a minute. Um, mood with color. So you could say, all right, tell, um, let, t- show me photos that are, cold. Show me photos that are warm. Um, that way they can play again with the Photoshop of, you know, using those adjustments in Photoshop. Uh, tell a story in three photos. So, um, you know, pick something that you can, that in three photos would tell me a story with a beginning, middle, and end. So obviously we're developing our storytelling skills with that. Um, and then uh, I also kind of called that social justice meme making. Um, we'll um, so let me, before we get into questions, I want to show you the, um, the, uh, 
photography as a witness. So again, another resource, if you have not been to uh, the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA, they have some also wonderful uh, education resources. This is a PowerPoint that they shared for teachers. So, um, and again, it's also going to give you a little bit of photography history um, in this, but, you know, we are, and there's a short little film there um, and it has questions. So, I mean, this, this has a, like a whole wonderful lesson, but again, adapt it. We sure have a lot going on right now. So, uh, photography is a witness document. Um, you know, if anyone has uh, goes, you know, to any of the um, the protests or, or things that are happening in their community. But really, I mean, what we can document right now is um, is what's going on. Is um, witnessing, you know, let's say if a student and their family goes and sits in line for one of these testing sites. You know, doc uh, sorry. So sorry, sorry. Um, one moment. Please put him out. I am so sorry. This is the problem with learning from home. Um, oh dear, so sorry. Let me shut my door. I'm gonna step away from my computer for just a minute. If you all wanna share some ideas in the chat, I'm gonna shut my door so the, the vocal air down. Be quiet. Go away. Put him outside. Yeah. Okay, I'm so 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 sorry. Um, so, um, with what we have going on right now, there are many opportunities to, you know, photography as a witness. So again, MoMA, uh, go check this out. And um, as I said, this is a, a PowerPoint that they uh, have available for um, teachers to download. So um, before we get into questions, um, again, just some resources. Um, Adobe has a blog that has some really great things on it. Uh, also, New York Times Learning Network. I, whoops, I use that for, they have a section in there um, that uh, is um, well, called What's Going On in This Picture. And I use that a lot of times for my bell ringers where I'll share the picture. And then the prompts are what's going on in this picture. What do you see that makes you say that? And uh, I think it was any other observations or um, uh, information you can get from the picture. So again, forcing them to really look at photos analytically and um, showing that they tell a great story. Digital Photography School is another website um, I like that has, again, you can pull tons of themes from there. National Geographic is great. And of course, the uh, Humans of New York. So I am going to make sure I can stop sharing my screen and then we can um, open it up if we have time uh, for uh, some questions. I'm, uh, let's see, is there a stop sharing? Green. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Great. Sorry about that. So, um, I guess if if we if we want to open up mics now, if anyone has um wants to share, has any questions, share your own ideas. Uh, I'd like to open it up to that now. Anyone? Does anyone have any questions about um, what uh, the, the learning journals or um, the, the process of, of? Hey, Michelle, it's Shane Smith. How you doing? Hi, Shane. Um, do you have like a rubric or what do you go by for grading these learning journals? Because I, I really like the idea. I'm just wondering uh, what instrument do you come up with to, to get a grade for the students? So um, I am using Canvas, as I said. I started using Canvas, um, the online uh, platform, LMS. I started using that two years ago, but I was learning as I went. So that was my year of kind of playing with it as I went. Um, so I didn't 
uh, use all the features. This past year was when I really started using it has a rubric feature, which obviously I could I can share that as well. Like it, the rubric I made in that that I correlate with this. Um, so I, um, because as we all know, and what we're teaching, it's it, it, creativity is subjective. So for those <laughs> learning journals, I kept it. Um, pretty basic on my rubric, like basically following directions. Did you have, um, you know, a title page with a, with an image check? Um, did you have a minimum of whatever I set, you know, 50 photos or what I forget what I said on it, but you know, so I Shane for those, I just did basically the, did you meet, or if I said, uh, some of my other, uh, ones, I that I did I required the camera shots for instance a wide a medium a t those was where I those were where I got uh, more into like uh rule illustrate rule of thirds well um I had you know the excellent like you knocked it out of the ballpark you're you know proficient um and then you know develop it like if they're like it was not quite so I that's how I did that so um if anyone's interested I am still <laughs> I, I feel like I'm always trying to make my rubrics better. Um, that's still something I, I'm always trying to improve upon. But for the learning journals, especially those first ones, I mainly just did it with my checklist. Did you turn in, did you do and turn in everything that I asked you to do? And then give them feedback to improve upon their photos. Because especially since they're new and especially those, some who've never picked up a camera and taken a photo, you know, I don't want, you don't want to, discourage them like oh you know ugh. uh so i just did it more um did you meet the the requirements of the assignment awesome thank you very much yeah and if anyone out there i know again uh pablo who's our and i'm embarrassed showing some of my photos in front of a pro like him um <laughs> since i've just been a uh uh hobby photographer um but yeah, you know, Pablo, I bet would have some probably really outstanding um, rubrics that we could uh, pick his brain for for assessment. Um, again, any, any other questions? Anyone? Um, anyone um, have any other um, photography uh, prompts or themes that you have? use that you enjoyed that your students enjoyed that you could share with us hey michelle this is morgan with kde hi i was just gonna let you know there are a few people that have their hands up i know it's kind of tricky no i know that's oh, why i'm oh. here um but there's a few people that have their hands up so i was just gonna um kind of call on them i think they Please. can Mute Please. Themselves. Yeah, I, I apologize that I am new to this platform. Oh, do. Um, okay, so I see uh, Tammy has her hand up and so does Bonnie. So Tammy, if you wanted to go first and then Bonnie, you can go after. Or maybe they don't know their hand is raised. <laughs> That's a possibility as well. I do. This is Bonnie. Can I say okay. something? Um, I just wanted to share my idea that, uh, can you hear me? Everybody yeah. Hear okay. Yes. Um, with Adobe Spark, um, we started using it last year. Um, and up until then, we had um, been creating a monthly newspaper that no one was reading, by the way. The students weren't reading it. We tried different things, posting it online in a PDF file, and still just no one was reading it. So last year, we went to a weekly um, uh, media, or pardon me, a video format. Uh, we took everything that we'd been covering in the newspaper. The students uh, started out with still photography, then we started blending still photography and video. Um, we used the Adobe Spark, and they had to tell the story of the week, and we called it the Wildcat Wrap Up, and we posted it, it um, straight to social media. We used uh, Facebook, Twitter, and it was really successful. So um, I can't emphasize enough what a great free resource Adobe Spark is when you're blending it with video and photography. That's a great idea, Bonnie. Um, and that, so that kind of, um, in, uh, I know we have another question waiting, um, but 
just to uh, jump off of that. That's another question, and maybe we'll we can talk about it in Shane's session later. That um, or touch on it here if we have time. Is I'm kind of stressing. I just found out our district is buying Chromebooks for all the students, and you know, obviously that's not going to run Adobe. Um, I did find um, that I guess Pixlr. They in the looking at it online, it looks like it has tries to mimic the the look and feel of Photoshop. But you know, for starting, but right now, for hopefully we'll be back at school sooner instead of later where we can get them on the Adobe. But I thought, you know what, this Adobe Spark, while, while they're just where I'm more emphasizing lessons about basic camera shots, the Adobe Spark, as she said, um, that they used it to make videos does work well. It's drag and drop, um, but it, I think it might help get us through um, a tough time. But I love how you're doing that, uh, Bonnie. That's a great idea. And then posting it on social media. Uh, other was there another hand up? There was, but it's gone now. Okay. Uh, well, I was also going to say there's a. Uh, oh, it's back up. Tammy, go ahead. Tammy, if you're talking, I don't think we can hear you. There you go. Well, this is Morgan again. While she's um, getting that figured out, I'll let you know um, that there's some comments. I didn't know if you can see the chat. There's no questions yet. Mostly okay. just people saying that you did a great job. And oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, so I wasn't going to read that out loud. I was going to read the questions if there were any, but I did want you to be aware that people have oh, been okay. sharing resources. Are you able to find I, that? I just found that. Will this be um, available to like, can I go back and look at this when this is over? Do you have to watch them okay. here? You should be able to um, see all the chats um, after this meeting is over. Hi, Myron. Hi, Dwayne. Oh, good. Good to see everyone. Um, so what were, um, did uh, Morgan, did you say there was a comment or a question? There are no questions yet. Um, I was just going to read them out loud if there were any. Um, but it seems like for the most part, um, it's people sharing um, resources, commenting on how great you did. Oh, cameras, Paula. Uh, hi, Paula. Um, the cameras that we use. So um, I've got in my classroom two uh, Canon uh, DSLRs that the kids can check out. They. I also have for our video the Canon Vixia, uh, which can, there's a little button you can push and it'll snap a photo. I don't, th th I mean, that's I don't think those are that great for that purpose, but I tell you, a lot of these kids um, for this assignment, um, they all have better phones than, I think I'm on iPhone 6, they all have, seems like way nicer phones than me, and the, some of the photos these kids' um, phones are taking were really uh, quite outstanding quality. Um, so uh, the kids are just kind of using, again, what I have available to check out or uh, their own their own cameras. And then there's another question. Um, do you have any editing ability with photos in Adobe Spark? Uh, I'm not, not really like when, yes and no. Um, so like when I make um, some of my, um, my, and actually while we're doing that, I might pull it up just to show you how, cause in it too, it'll show sh when Shane asked about the, um, Rubric, so I'm gonna pull this up while I'm talking. But um, uh, oh my gosh, I just lost my thought. Uh, what was? <laughs> what, what, I'm still in my first cup of coffee. What was the question again? Um, do you have any editing ability with photos yes. in Adobe Spark? So yeah, so Adobe um, um, Spark, it's kind of like like um, filters. So um, you can and you can um you can add a filter, you know, so kind of almost like, in, 
early Instagram. Um, so let's see. I'm going to. Um, I'll give you an example here of. Um, okay. I am going to attempt to share my screen again. Um, let's see. Okay. Can y'all see that? Um, so this is in my Canvas page. So this is where I have the assignment. So again, I just, I, um, when my students call things up, I just, I like to pretty things up. So I use, um, Adobe Spark hey. yep. post post um, to make this. So this was one of my photos that I took um, and I put it in the post. So like, so with this, when I'm making the post, you could crop it. I think I actually did crop this one. Um, you can add filters, you know, blur or, or blue or whatever. And so that's, a, that, that's pretty much all you can do. Add a filter and crop and, with the post, I did the, you know, basically the theme, the environment, and a little description there. And then, um, and then Shane, here's uh, what y'all were talking. I just did a you know, contact sheet. Did you have it or you didn't? Uh, photo essay. Um, you had five, you had four, you only did, you did not come close. Uh, learning journal, you met all my criteria. It's missing one or two, and that. So again, this is a beginner assignment. So that's a really beginner uh, rubric, um, super simple. Just I'm just making sure, did you do it? Did you follow directions, which obviously is an important skill. Um, and then obviously like when I grade this, I'm able to um, at the end of it, uh, put uh, comments. So I can say, um, you know, great job or hey, next time let's work on your framing or too much headroom on that person or, um, you know, I'm able to give that uh, creative uh, for the students. So, um, good question. Any other questions? Myron, did you have a question? Actually, I just had a comment. Um, she had, uh, Ms. Roche had spoke about using iPhones and yeah, the, the 11s and X are pretty good. We actually were able to pull off a couple of films using uh -huh. iPhones this past year. That's all I wanted to comment on. Yeah, not, and that's true. I, that's what I'm, Myron, I'm with you. I'm, I'm hoping now granted, less I'm happy to drive equipment around to these kids. You know, we've got the equipment, but um, I honestly, this year was my, um, with, you know, I think I have 16 Vixias. Um, I, my rate of kids checking out equipment this year really dropped significantly because the kids had these cameras that, you know, they were checking out a tripod and the little adapter for the phone to hook onto the tripod. Um, but the, the kids were using their phones for shooting a lot of the videos. Um, anything else? Yes, we have another one. Um, Tammy would like to know, do you teach the concepts such as black and white before you give those assignments? Or do you give them the assignment and cover the concept of the assignment at the time? Yes, so I, um, I again, it started, as I said, using Canvas and I build all my lessons in there. So I have presentations. So um, like that, uh, the Dorothea Lang one that I just showed you. So, um, you know, I would show that as an example and show examples and talk about black and white photography. Um, and yes, so I do have a lesson building up to it. Um, there was another, I think it was on Canon's, um, you know, what we can, again, we'll sh maybe share this at Shane's or maybe I, I can post them in our, um, our Google Classroom or our pathway group. Um, there was, I think it's Canon Camera had a really neat uh, video um, lesson where they, um, and this would go kind of into that interviewing one, and it showed how there was this, it was a social experience. And so I play this for the kids, how they showed this man, and he was bald, and he had on a blue shirt. Every photographer that met with him, they told him, something else they're like he's a um 
he was in prison for 20 years. He uh, was a lawyer. Like, and then he had these, you know, he interviewed and he's like, yeah, my dad in prison. He told these fake stories to the photographers. Then after they got to know him, they took photos and then they showed the photos and then all these photographers came in and they were looking at them like, what, how did, oh, how did you see that in that guy? But they were basing their image of him off of that. So it, it's a really neat, I'll, I'll find that if anyone's interested and I can, uh, it's in one of my Canvas classes and I can post it. But that was a really, really, you know, how our perception, you know, how you perceive someone is going to come out in your art, you know, um, so, um, so yes, I, I'm sorry, I ramble, but, um, it, the short answer is yes, I, I'll do that incorporate, um, the, the skill set or why we do, you know, why would we do black and white or what impact of black and white? Um, I'll do a, a lesson on that. And again, as I said, I'm not because photography, I, I mean, I took classes in college, um, it's just, I love it. It's just, I enjoy looking at it and then I enjoy it as a hobby. Um, so this was just adding the photography since I was excited to add it because of the Photoshop certification option. Um, and two, I thought this is a great foundation for basic camera shots, you know, is, is framing. And then again, telling, telling a story with that image. So um, I do, I do do, le I guess, little mini lessons on it before I make the assignment. So more questions are we, uh, are we putting out a how are um i'm not sure on to be honest what time this was supposed to end but i was going to say um if you wanted to um are you able to like maybe pop your email in the chat um and then if people of oh, 10 20 okay so yeah we're right at time oh okay. uh, so if you wanted to maybe or i don't know if they already have your email or not i was just thinking if maybe they had additional questions or wanted to kind of shoot some resources back and forth and that might be a great be a common place for everybody to have it i'm putting it in now and then um i am um all of y'all are i am in the, both the um Tanya's Google our old classroom. I am in that, and I am also in our Facebook media uh, pathway group. So um, that's a great way to reach me because uh, I am always on my laptop. So my email beings every time something is in posted in the um, the the Google classroom. So that's a a great way to reach me or my email. I'm always on my email too. So. Um, so I, I'm highly reachable and uh, would love to share. And as I said, you know, again, shout out to Pablo <laughs> because I think he he connected me to that uh, Adobe uh, edX. And um, I just I, I I take credit to uh, all these other resources that I find on my own and I just try to incorporate them. So I just I love um, I love that we can. Gosh, uh, our community. Arts group has been a lifesaver, just all of us connecting. All right. Anything else? I think we are out of time in case people have other sessions. Um, I hope to see, see everyone in um, Shane's session. I think, I think is that at one o'clock, Shane? 1 p.m. Um, and again, just, you know, <laughs> trying, Paula. <laughs> Um, cousin is uh, Brian Miller, our new principal. He joined us at Eastside uh, last year, and it's just uh, knocking it out of the ballpark, being awesome. So, um, but God, you came, Paula. Um, so, y'all, let's stay connected. And I appreciate all of y'all's ideas because, gosh, it's helped me uh, these last nine years. And um, if there are no more questions, I think we can wrap it up, and uh, we'll just reconnect as needed in the classroom and Facebook group. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thanks, Michelle.